How are you guys doing today? This is your boy Mike Fallon here, uh, representing Citizen Cinema and The Buttery Show at Roboy Toy Fest 2022. I am here with a legend, Mark Richardson. How are you doing today, sir? Hey, how's it Mike? Good to see you. Now, for everybody watching, especially like shout out to the Morphin Network, uh, this gentleman right here was the prop master on Power Rangers when it first started for the first 10 seasons, correct? Yeah, 10 years. 10 years on that show. Had a blast. So right now, like right here at, at the festival, we have actually some of the screen use props from the series. If you want to do a breakdown of what it is, I'd appreciate it. Well, what it is is I was in my storage unit, and I found this is Trini's dagger. When Zordon first gives the Rangers their weapons, and I found one of her daggers, and uh, that's when, when you first see it in America, that's it. The Japanese version was vinyl, foam, cool. We had to throw this together, and there it is. That's, that's how it was in 1993. I also found uh, one of Walter uh, Zach's uh, helmet. This is a re resin pool from the original um, uh, molds from the, the Black Rangers uh, helmets. And uh, I, I have the molds to all the power coins, so when I show up at these places, I make me a few and I sell them, sign them, hand them out for 10 bucks a pop. So come on down and buy some Power Ranger coins. So what does it feel like knowing that it's almost going on 30 years and literally your efforts contributing to Power Rangers has helped the longevity of it to where it is now? Well, I was just the right place at the right time, you know. I, and what's odd is, <clears throat> you know, I work on shows now where we'll hire uh, affects people to build all their props. Back then, I didn't have any money, so and we did had no time, so they needed like a device to save the earth. I needed to go in the prop room and the next day and come up with some kind of device that saves the earth. You know, nowadays you have production designer, showrunner, director. Everybody has to look at the designs, the concepts. It's sent out. Back then, and we didn't have the time. I basically went into the prop room, hot glued a bunch of GI Joes and and slinkies and flashlights together and made a device to save or destroy the earth. Yeah. Yeah. So what got you into this field, of, this line of work? Like what inspired you to start in this career path? I, I'm not sure how that happened. I was doing really low budget stuff, working with Troma, Nukem High 2 and 3, and I was writing, directing, producing, having a great time, making no money. Uh, Jim, Jim Lotfi had, was doing the, the pilot and he goes, let's get Mark on the show. Uh, Yuda Aku was the production designer and an unsung hero, I think, because he came up with that that ridiculously 80s vibrant look, you know, but people never talk about that cat. But he hired, he basically said, Mark, if you want this job, come on down and you got it. And that's how I got the job. They basically, I just walked in and everybody thought the show was going to last a week. Nobody thought it was going to be a hit. And I'm looking at the footage of these monsters growing big thinking this is going to be huge and I like I was having Rangers sign toys because you know these guys were making no money at the time so I was getting their signatures on everything um, like they would I would have stacks of their scripts where they would sign them all for nothing and you know now these things go for like three thousand dollars this is a copy by the way um, but I knew the show was going to be a hit. I knew it was going to be monstrous. And it still is. It's a great show. It's a fun show. And the, the cast, uh, I know you guys interview a lot of the, the cast from, they have always been wonderful. They've always been great, humble sweetheart. But those original guys, Walter, Jason, uh, Austin, Kimberly, Twee, um, they, they were wonderful. They were wonderful to work with. It was a great memory. I have nothing but love for that show. Uh, you know, people talk about how low budget and everything else. It was still a loving it, and they they let you really run with your creativity. And you know, I, I you know I, I do shows now. I just did a J.J. Abrams show, you know, and I loved working. J.J. Abrams is a god. He's a sweetheart, but I don't have the creativity I had on Power Rangers. Power Rangers, I got a lot of times out of necessity. I had to make things, but I enjoyed making things back then. That was a lot of fun. It was a fun show. So what was the feeling like after the show premiered and what, seeing like, like during those first few seasons, like what, watching kids walk around on Halloween or at different cons wearing the props that you helped put together? Uh, I, I, nothing. Oh, it's funny because some guy came by with, a, I think, a Lost Galaxy gun that he had made. And, I, you know, I used Super Soaker and a water jug. 
But this guy had recreated this thing and made it a hundred times better than I would ever have made it. It, had, it lit up and looked wonderful. I, I've always appreciated the fact that it inspired kids to make stuff. Yeah. Like, when, especially with Billy Gadgets. Billy Gadget, you know, for me, I would paint it blue and put a flashlight on it and make it a Billy Gadget. But kids would write me and say that, you know, they went in the garage and they would show me pictures of Billy devices that they made. I love that. I love the fact that I inspired people to make, be creative. I thought that was really fun. And, and, and lastly, it, like, how do you feel now to know that it, uh, Power Rangers is now going to be getting more movies and TV shows under the new ownership that they're with now? I think Hasbro is going to make it a, a, a huge success again. The show is lightning in the bottle. It's constantly doing well. You know, Disney's the only one that I thought kind of messed it up. But, you know, it still went, did well. You know, I think now that Hasbro has it, it's, it's just, it's, it's such a hit. And, it, and, you know, the fact that you have people that are, you know, in their 40s, you know, that are lawyers that are at these conventions because, you know, they, they love the Red Ranger, you know. And you have these new kids that are like eight years old and they're still into the original Power Ranger. When you go to Walmart, they're still selling original Power Ranger toys. It's, a, it's always going to be a hit. It's always going to be a system that works. Well, from me, from all the fans and myself to you, thank you for help building our childhood. Yeah. Genuinely. Yeah. And thank you for your time, sir. Oh, anytime, man. So anytime. Where, where, where can people find you online or, or, or your yeah. upcoming work? I mean, you, Mark Richardson, uh, hey, I, if you want to talk to me, I'm on Horror Icona. It's horror, H-O-R-R-O-R-I-C-A-N-A. -R -R it's horror icon. That's my horror page. I'm um, big into horror films. Worked with Rob Zombie. Yeah, I did Piranha 3. I did tons of horror films. Always doing horror films. But if you want to talk to me, say hi. Buy one of my coins. You know, uh, come to Horror Icon. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you. That's Thank right. you. Appreciate and I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Peace. Yo, thank you guys for watching this Buttery Show interview. Shout out again to Mark Richardson for doing this interview. Such a cool dude. But yes, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.